guys and welcome back to my channel. It's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. I'm so glad to have you back today. And if you're new here and visiting my channel for the first time, welcome. I do lots of DIYs, trash to treasure, furniture flips with my husband Chris, and thrifting adventures to fit into farmhouse and decor. Yes, this is my cat Squirt and I had to pull up a chair for him because he wanted to be part of the video. So in today's video, I am excited to be teaming up with Julie of Thrilled Thrifter. So Julie was so kind to contact me and see if we wanted to collab together and I was absolutely thrilled. No pun intended or every pun intended, but I absolutely love her channel. I love watching her thrift. I love that she takes her family along. You know, I enjoy watching anybody doing thrift hauls and I love watching how people do decorate them with in their home. So that's where we're, we have our similarities of our thrifting. Yep, now I have two cats. <laughs> so this is what today's video is all about. She is actually going to be painting something up for her home decor. And I am going to be showing you how I paint up three thrifted stools. So here are three stools that I have found out when I'm on my thrifting adventures. Each one of them is unique in itself. So I just absolutely love this little footstool. I love those metal legs on it. And for $3.09, I did not think that that was a bad price. And then for this stool, I just love that twisted metal and I loved that it had a cushion as the seat. I was excited to get to do a round cushion. And I had actually passed the stool up, you know, when you're thrifting, there's these all the time. But what drew my husband to this was that it was metal and it wasn't wood. So that definitely spiked my interest. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the seats from the base. I just like to paint things separately, especially on this one where you have wood and you have metal. I just like that cleaner look. Yes, you could paint them all together, but I like to paint things separately. And in, and then of course I have to remove the cushion on this because I need to reupholster it. And then my first thought was, man, that's a lot of tags on the bottom of this. So this stool had a little bit of wonkiness and I could see right off the bat, it's because it only has one of its little levelers left. So I guess I'll just remove that. So then I definitely liked this little stool. I love that uniqueness of four separate legs. So now that I have them taken apart, I'm going to clean them. So I started right off on this white metal one that I thought looked very dirty. That's kind of why I thought it was wood. So I was just using some Dawn dish soap and some hot water and then quickly realized that that was not going to be strong enough. I was going to need to change to my crud cutter and then that actually got all that grime and dirt right off of that metal. So yep, there is a difference. This crud cutter is just wonderful stuff. And yes, I cleaned the other two pieces the same way. I just used a little bit of that Dawn just to wet it down and then um, the crud cutter to finish it off, making sure that I wiped it off. You know, it's kind of a wipe on, wipe off, and then you wanna let it thoroughly dry before moving on. And you wanna get all that grime and any grease off so your paint will adhere properly to the pieces. Now that my pieces are all cleaned and they're all thoroughly dry, I take them into my spray room, which we are so blessed to have a spray room in our workshop, and I use our go-to Rust-Oleum Kills Paint and Primer in flat black. This is the spray I really like for metal, metal items. I feel like it adheres to them very well. And, and being able to have these items on a board that I can put on a turntable just makes it so much easier to paint them. So when I am painting a stool like this or a chair or most items, I like to flip them upside down and try to get the most coverage and then work from the inside out. That way that I don't accidentally touch what I've already painted and I just try to get the most coverage on my first spray. So this is why I like to flip them upside down. I just have a little bit of paint left to do now. So this was just, this is what works for me. And I thought that I would share it for, with you. Now that I've got the bases all sprayed, it's time to work on the top. Now this top had some wear, it had, its top coat was coming off, it had a circle from something being set on it. So I was going to need to sand it. So I'm just using the orbital sander with some 220 sandpaper. 
I don't, there's not, it's not a very thick coat, so it won't take much to take it off. And I will do both sides and the sides. So now when it came to taking the fabric off this little footstool, I was like, oh, yeah, this is unique because it had the four legs, but then they also had glued this entire piece of paper on to cover the bottom up. So Chris was helping me to remove the staples. I like to remove any of the fabric off of these pieces so that I can reupholster them and give somebody a new product. And then after using the staple removing tool, sometimes it just kind of bends the staples and they're like nails, they're just standing straight up. And then we just use this little tool to go back in and pull the rest of the staple out. So sometime when you're taking fabric off, you need to kind of do it in layers. So of course I have to take this dust cover off first. So I kind of pulled the staples up using the staple remover. Then I go back in with this tool and then completely pull them out. Like I said, it only kind of bends them sometimes. You're lucky if you get them to come out. So, And then that'll get me to the inner layers of more staples that I have to remove on the outer of the fabric. And then, like, there wasn't enough staples on here. The, all these tags were stapled on, too. And as you see there, I'm now into the inner layer where there's some more staples to remove. So this piece of foam cushion was attached, was glued on the seat. So I'm not able to flip this piece of wood over. I need to reuse that cushion. I can't cut that kind of shape. So I'm just taking the orbital sander just to smooth over where I removed all the staples. So I like to paint my plywood side that you're going to see from underneath black. When I'm reupholstering a piece, I just think it gives a cleaner look. I don't spend the money on buying the black dust cover. I try to keep my prices reasonable, so this helps me do that. So not only was I painting the one side of the pieces that I'm reupholstering, but I'm also using my black paint, I, this is the paint that I use, to paint the other piece of wooden top, and I will be painting both sides of this as well. And then for this top piece of this chair, I'm going to be sealing the black paint and using polycrylic as my top coat. And yes, I will do polycrylic on both the top and the bottom of this piece. That's just a finished coat and helps with the longevity of the paint to stay on. And then after the polycrylic dries, I'm not really going to distress this piece, but I'm going to just take some steel wool. I use the fine, the 4-0 steel wool, just to take down any bumpiness that the spray might have left behind, just so I have a nice smooth finish. So why I wasn't going to distress this piece is because if you're new to my channel, I love green sack stripes, and I know my regular viewers know that. This is just something that sells really well for me. So I take the time to do grain sack stripes. So what I'm doing here is I'm measuring to find a center. Finding center in a round object's not always easy. And I know you could crisscross it and mark little X, but I don't like to write on my paint because sometimes you actually do see that mark, especially since I polycrylic it. So I'm just double checking my first piece of tape. I want to make sure that is that is nice and centered. So the next step is to take another piece of masking tape and butt it right up to the sides. So one on the right side, one on the left side, butting it right up and trying to keep it level, parallel, right with the first piece of tape. You want to make sure that that piece that you're folding under, that you're staying or butting up right against that piece of tape so you have a straight line. And then you remove that center tape because that is where your paint stripe is going to go. And then I kind of press down the tape trying to make sure that it's attached in, to the board. So I like to use the Apple Barrel products. I love the multi-use and I'm using the white to go against this black from my first stripe. And then to apply the paint, I just use a makeup sponge that I get out of the, do the dollar store. And then when applying the paint, I do that dry technique where you put a little bit of paint on, take a little bit of paint off. And I kind of do a dabbing technique, not, to press, not too much pressure. You don't want to try to pu push paint underneath your tape. And so I will do this about three times to get the white to be as white as I want drying in between. And I do usually use the help of a blow dryer to help dry it. And then I definitely use the help of a blow dryer to remove that masking tape. I just buy the masking tape at the dollar store too. I want it to stick but not be so sticky that it pulls 
that black paint off or the previous paint that I'm painting. So the blow dryer just heats up that sticky and just releases it nice and smooth. And there you have your crisp line. So my tape placement for my next line is I kind of leave a quarter of an inch. You can see I'm not putting completely covering that. That's why I like the masking tape because I can see through because you need a space in between your next line. So that's how I kind of eyeball it. And so I'll put a piece of tape like this and then I'll go on the opposite side and I'll do the same thing. That way I have my space in between before I put in my next tape for my next line. And so now for my next piece of tape, I'm just making a little bit of a quarter inch gap. That's where my paint will go, trying to keep it nice and level, nice and even all the way down, making sure that when I'm wrapping around the sides, I'm doing the same thing. And then one on the right and then one on the left. And this is just, you can measure, you can eyeball. That's the fun of grain sack stripes. I could put this three, I could put five. You, you can do whatever you want with grain sack striping. That's probably why I love and then just applying the paint the same way and then three coats to cover using the blow dryer in between to help dry. And then here I really want to use the blow dryer so that I don't pull off that white paint that I just painted. That just really, it does really help. So I'm usually a fan of distressing pieces so most of the time I would have distressed that black but because of this technique that I'm going to be doing on this white with this Waverly Wax, I love the stuff on black pieces. I want to kind of age that white. So what that's going to do, because I'm putting it on pretty fresh, I'm not really letting it cure. I mean, it's dry to the touch, but it's not cure, cured. So I'm just using that Waverly Wax, rubbing it on that white. And what that's going to do is it's kind of going to like act like a sanding. It's kind of going to distress it anyway. I don't want it to be that crisp line. I like my pieces to look kind of aged. So if this is a look that you don't like and you want to make it more crisp, just let the paint cure or put a little polycrylic over the top of that white. But this is what I like to do. And then I will proceed on, or waxing the rest of the black piece. I just love what this Waverly Wax does to black. It just richens it up. So now I'm on to reupholstering these little cushions for the stools. So first you can see where I could not get all that paper off and you're going to be covering it up. Nobody's ever going to know, I guess, unless they reupholster it. So I'm just using some spray glue to adhere that piece of foam cushion back onto this piece of plywood. That way when I'm working with it, it's not sliding around. So my next step for reupholstering is applying bedding. This did not have any bedding, but this is just a procedure that I'm used to doing when I am reupholstering something like this. So I just cut a square of my bedding off so that I had plenty to cover and then just stapling it on. So when upholstering, you usually want to do opposite sides that way that you can pull it nice and taut, that, that, that you you tighten it right up, but you don't pucker your foam. That just gives you that nice bouncy and clean look. And then at this point, you can cut off any of the excess batting that you did not need. Like I said, it's easier to cut it off than trying to stretch it out. My go-to for reupholstering, I like the farmhouse look, so I buy drop cloth linen from either Amazon or Harbor Freight. I bring it home, I wash it, immediately detergent only. So what I'm doing here is I'm kind of cutting off the four corners so I don't have that bunching of fabric when I go to fold this over. You don't really have to do that with the batting because the batting stretches and it's a little bit thinner. So the same thing with the fabric, except on the fabric part, I fold that raw end over to edge over to give a cleaner line and the same thing I'm trying to watch for puckers I'm trying to pull it nice and tight but not that it puckers and then I find that it's easier to put a staple in the middle and then work my way down one side and then work my way down the other side then spin it over do the opposing side with the same technique when it comes to the corners, I like to make tight little packages. So I staple all the way down and then I will be folding in one side of the fabric and then laying the other fabric, twisting it a little bit so it has a nice fold like I was doing the top where I was 
covering up that free edge and sometimes I will go back in if I think I'm going to have too much bunching or too much extra fabric. The, the drop cuff fabric does stretch a little bit so it is okay. It's easier to take little off at a time and then try to put it back on. So this is the tight little package that I like to make so that it's not all puckery and you don't see a whole bunch of little creases. This is just a look I like and so see how I just got it nice and smooth there. So the round objects, you gotta tackle this a little bit differently. So I cut a square of what I think is going to cover the seat. And so that's what I'm double checking there. And now I'm going to proceed to cut my piece almost into a round circle. The thing that's different with doing the round is instead of doing opposing sides like you did on the rectangle or a square piece, I work my way around and pulling it taut and tight the entire time I'm working around and I don't, for the round object, I need to pull it tighter so I don't really have where I'm going to be able to fold that raw edge over because of the way that I need to pull this. I wanted to make sure that I had plenty of fabric that I could pull this tighter. So this is just how I have done it. I'm sure somebody probably knows a easier way, but this is just what works for me. And I just keep working around the circle, making sure that I don't have a lot of puckers or any creases. A lot of times I do have to go back through with a hammer. That foam is nice. It is bouncy. That's the way you want it to be so you have something soft to sit on. But sometimes when you're trying to put your weight in, trying to staple, you can don't, I don't always get all the staples all the way through. So then I make sure that I go back through with a hammer and hammer them in. And now I can go back through and cut off any of that excess fabric that I want. And I try to really make this as clean as I can, even cutting off some of that foam that actually stretched out too, since I did not, wasn't able to fold over that raw edge. So this may seem a little familiar. You might have a little deja vu of doing a round object and doing some grain sack stripes and me finding center. So yes, I'm doing that to this cushion also, actually both of these fabric cushions. Like I said, this is what sells well for me in my booth. So it's the same procedure of finding center, putting your feet first piece of tape down, butting a piece of tape up, so I won't really go through in great detail because I did do the step by step for the first piece, but this is exactly how I'm doing this round piece and also the rectangle piece for the little footstool. And then removing that middle piece because that is where your first paint stripe will go. So yes, I'm doing both of these at the same time. So I like the, like I said, the Apple Barrel, the multi-use paint. And for my drop cloth fabric, I like to use the black. The black shows really well. I have used gray tones, but for these, I am doing black since I had painted the base of the black. Now, the difference that I'm pausing here to not fast forward and just do the same thing is that if you, you're still doing like a dry, sponge technique i'm still using a makeup sponge on this fabric but i do a sliding technique because i find if you try to do a bouncing technique like you do with wood items that it makes dark spots so here as you see i'm kind of just sliding with a very soft touch just letting those the fabric grab on it to the paint and then I do do a couple coats until I get the black as dark as I want and yes you can use a blow dryer to help dry in between also so here's where I just repeat exactly what I am doing on the first round item that I did. See how I overlap that so I get that quarter inch gap. That's why I love the masking tape. I don't reuse the masking tape. I know some people do. I don't want to actually have like paint that might be left wet to touch any of my stuff. That's why I buy my masking tape at the dollar store. I don't it's from the dollar store so it's the same exact technique then for that second stripe i do the same slidey technique soft hand a little bit of paint and a couple coats to get the dark of the black that i want and yep you can use that blow dryer to help dry in between so the finish up on this fabric is just a little bit different so the multi-use apple barrel paint when i heat that up it is right now 
as it just got painted onto the fabric, it is hard and crusty and not soft to the touch. But if I put a piece of parchment paper and use a hot iron, which I'm using my Easy Press from my Cricut because I have it. And so what that does is it's melting that fabric and the apple barrel paint together as one and it is a permanent bond. And I wash stuff and it is nice and soft. So as timing goes of how long do I hold that press or that hot iron on, you can feel when it is completely bonded nice and soft. So I always like to protect my reupholstered pieces and my go-to is Scotchgard and I just give it a good healthy coat and then make sure that you're doing this in a well ventilated area because yes it is a chemical and it is smelly but it does protect your fabric. Now that I have all my seats and all my cushions done, it's back on to finishing the bases of them. So I had painted these black, I have polycrylic them, and now I'm finishing them up with some Waverly Antiquing Wax. This is another top coat kind of. It's just pr protecting that paint even more and I just love what the Waverly Antiquing Wax does to that black paint. So you wipe it on and then wipe off any excess. And after I've let that Waverly Wax dry, it, it dries pretty good hour or so, I can now put the seats and the bases back together. And then like for this wood piece, I made sure that when I was painting it that I didn't fill in those holes so I knew exactly where I needed to set the base. When putting back on the base with this seat, now I have made a line. So what I need to do is make sure that my grain sack stripes are in the center of the two legs. And so I'm going to have to re-drill holes on this piece only because I changed where the center of this was. And then I can just go in and reattach it with the screws. If you remember on this stool, I had one of those little screw in pieces on the bottom and there was only one left. I do not have any of those to replace. So I will be replacing these with some felt pads. That is a metal foot. So just to protect somebody's floor, I'm just replacing it with some of these little felt pads. So now replacing the legs on this footstool. Now one, I flipped that piece of wood over so there's no holes. And then two, this had that piece of um, paper that was glued down so it was flat to it. So I have to actually inset the feet a little bit because I won't be able to screw into the fabric. So that's okay because, you know, as long as all four feet are level and you know, parallel and equal to each other, this will work out just fine. So if you are new to my channel, as a reseller and as a maker of these YouTube videos, I consider ourselves a how-to channel. So that's why we go through the step-by-step -step, step procedure. So I don't just show the before and after. So this is the how-tos if you want to resell thrifted items yourself or you just want to make over thrifted items for yourself. So this is why I go through the step-by-step -step and don't just show the before and after. I absolutely love doing thrifted items and giving them new life. And I think these turned out absolutely beautiful. So I thank you so much for watching today's video. And what did you think of my thrifted stools? I know they all had grain sack in them, but you know, that is what sells in my booth. I love to do stencils on it, but sometimes the stencils kind of It just sit. all depends. You mean grain sack, I think anybody that de decorates in the farmhouse or the primitive can add that to their you know, As a reseller, that's what I'm in. Figure out what sells for you, so that's what you put in your booth. And I absolutely love doing grain sack. I know that they're all on the shade of black, but right now black is selling. It's still wow. selling, but black selling a little bit better. I absolutely love doing both. Both, and we just keep our inventory supplies to a minimum and that way we just know what we are going to be painting. So don't forget to check out Julie's channel and see what she has painted up in her furniture flip. So I thank you so much for watching today's video and if you're part of my YouTube family thank you again just you watching my kind of content helps my channel grow and if you're hopping over from Julie's channel please give Julie, you know, give me a shout out that you're hopping over. 
and then if you are new to my channel please consider consider hitting that subscribe button thanks so much for watching